do you start an Etsy shop really though? Chances are, if you've been researching how to start an Etsy shop, you've probably gathered about 30 steps that you need to take and are probably feeling pretty intimidated by all the advanced Etsy strategy, everything from SEO to niching down to mock-ups. Am I right? Well, if you wanna sell on Etsy but feel totally overwhelmed not knowing where to start, I got you, friend, because today I'm breaking it down into five super simple steps to get you going on Etsy. Let's get it. Welcome back to the channel, friends. If this is our first time meeting, I'm Kate. I'm a wife, mom, Etsy seller, and business coach, and I'm so excited you're here. I'm so excited to go over these five simple steps to get started on Etsy today. Like I said, my mission here is to break this down as simply as possible and make it easy to understand for beginners wanting to start selling on Etsy. In addition to these five simple steps that you can take to get started on your Etsy shop, I'm also excited to share with you a bit about one of my favorite resources, Taylor Brands, and I also have two additional pro tips at the end. So make sure to watch this video all the way through to get those tips. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into step number one. So step number one, when you want to open an Etsy shop is to first decide what you want to sell. On Etsy, the top four categories that you would be thinking of are either handmade products, digital products, print on demand products or vintage products. Etsy has a strict no reselling policy for manufactured items. So everything that you sell on Etsy has to either be handmade, which means that you yourself are either actually making the item or designing it, or you can sell digital items that you yourself have designed and created for download, or you can sell vintage items, but they have to be truly vintage, which means 20 years or older. So I know it can be hard to get specific with this, but I definitely recommend niching down as much as possible here to pick one of these categories to start with. You can always open additional shops in the future, but you don't wanna offer several different types of products in one shop. You wanna become known as the specialist and the expert in one specific thing. So think about between these different options, which one best fits your passions, what you're interested in, as well as what you think would sell best on the platform and what you could create the best. Then once you've decided what type of product you want to offer, then we move on to step number two, which is to establish your business. The first first part of establishing your business is deciding on your business name. This is a super exciting step. If you don't know what you want your business name to be yet, I recommend you choose something that is easy for people to remember and also something that makes sense with the type of products or the niche that you'll be selling in. When you think you've got a good name in mind, you also want to make sure to check for the domain name and that name on social media, whatever platforms you think you'll be on to make sure that that name is available and not already taken by another business. The next part of establishing your business is to decide on on your branding and to really dive deep into the feel of your branding, which is your logo, your brand colors, any fonts that you want to use specifically in your marketing promotions and your branding across the board, and also what sort of overall vibe or feel you want your brand to have, whether it be light and airy, maybe it's dark and moody, maybe it's muted earthy tones, but think about what sort of feel you want when people encounter you, whether it be on social media, on your shop itself, you want to give them a specific vibe and aesthetic right from the beginning. Going along with this, you want to think about any marketing materials you might need to go ahead and prep and have made ahead of time, whether that be a business card or a pack-in flyer that you might be including in your packaging if you're selling handmade items, or even fun things to up-level your packaging, like branded stickers or labels. And then of course, you can't forget the legal steps to establishing your business as well. Now, I'm not a legal professional, so I can't give you any official legal advice. You definitely need to do your own research to figure out what steps you need to take here. But a lot a lot of people start on Etsy either as a sole proprietor or an LLC. So research and see which one of those fits you the best and go with that. You'll also need to look into possibly getting a federal EIN number as well as any state licenses or permits you might need to operate your business. Again, if you're in the US, this varies state to state, so I can't tell you exactly what you need, but you can definitely find that information just by researching what you need for your specific state as far as opening a business and getting a business license. Now, getting all of this established for your business may seem like a lot of work and seem really intimidating, but thankfully there are resources out there that provide more of an all-in-one solution for business owners who are just getting started with their business. One of these great resources is Taylor Brands. On the Taylor Brands website, you can literally get everything you need to establish your business from your logo and branding to marketing materials to even forming your LLC. They help you launch your business step-by-step -step with their customized business building experience. If you're in the U.S. and want to form 
form an LLC for your business, Taylor Brands will take care of it for you. Getting an LLC or limited liability company is a pretty popular choice for small business owners as it adds a level of professionalism to your business and can greatly impact how much you pay in taxes and your liability. Having an LLC builds trust with customers and is relatively simple to maintain. You can just answer a few questions and Taylor Brands will take it from there and handle the process hassle-free. While you're there, Taylor Brands can also help you create your logo, purchase your custom domain name, design your website, create a digital business card, and even put your logo on your own custom merch. You can literally look professional in a matter of minutes, no coding or design skills needed. So click the link in the description below to check out Taylor Brands and use the code KateHayes30 for 30% off Taylor Brands plans. I'm super excited for you guys to try it and I wanna say a big thank you to Taylor Brands for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Okay, once you've chosen what type of products you wanna offer as well as established your business, then it's time to move on to step number three, which is to actually open your shop. When you go to Etsy.com and click to open your shop, it's a pretty simple process. Etsy just asks you a few different rounds of questions to get your initial setup complete. These are things like what you want your shop name to be, asking for your personal and business information, as well as getting your finances set up. So I definitely recommend if you want to have a separate business bank account that you have that ready to go first, because this initial setup is where you're going to input all of your financial information to get your shop officially open. Now, during this initial setup, it will ask you to create one listing. You have to make that first listing in order to get your shop set up complete, but don't stress too much about this. You don't have to actually keep or use this listing at all, and you can always change it after you get done with this initial part, but it just wants you to go through the steps of creating your first initial listing. So you can seriously just add like one picture and just go through the bare minimum of what's required for that listing. And then once you're done with the initial setup, you can always deactivate or delete it and add your real listings later. Once your initial setup is complete, then the next steps to get your shop up and going is to go ahead onto your shop manager and customize and add some very crucial parts to your shop. This would be like adding your profile picture, adding your logo and your banner, filling in your about section with your shop story and any information you wanna give in that section, as well as completing your policies. Now policies are things like returns and exchanges and shipping and payment methods. So you wanna make sure all of that is set up on your shop so when buyers start to land on your shop page, they can see very clearly what your policies are. Now, if you have no clue what to put for these policies, Etsy's got you covered because they actually have templates that you can use and they have the basic information already there for you for each of these different types of policies. So you can just go on and use what they already have and tweak it a little bit to add or take away from whatever does not apply to your shop. Once you have your shop all set up and ready to go, step number four is kind of a combo step. This includes doing product and trend research and also beginning to create your product. Okay, so the first part of this step is doing trend and product research to really niche down and get specific about style and design elements that you want to include for the products that you're going to sell. So you wanna make sure that you're niching down on a style that's either trending or proven to be trending by doing some research either on Etsy itself or through a tool like Sales Samurai to figure out what people are actually searching for, what trends are on the rise, and what design elements you could incorporate into your products to ensure that you're going to offer something that'll be in demand and popular on the platform. A great way to do this is to go on Etsy and search for a keyword phrase that describes your product that you're thinking of and take note of the results that come up on the first and second pages and specifically taking note of the listings that have the little yellow bestseller or popular now badge because those are clues that these are the listings that are the best sellers that are doing the best in your niche. And you can look at things that you see repeating over and over again, whether it be specific color schemes, font styles, patterns, you can identify the things within those listings that are making them really successful and then put your own twist on it to offer something in your niche that is unique, but also trending with those same successful elements. Now, the second part of this is to actually start creating your product. So this is different for handmade versus digital products. So let's say if you're offering handmade products, a couple steps here. Number one, you want to figure out where you're sourcing your materials from. Ideally, you want to source your materials from a wholesale company. And so this is going to involve a little bit of research on finding the right wholesale supplier. More on that in just a minute. But once you've identified where you're going to get your materials from, then you need to order enough for your first batch of what you want to start on and actually start making your product. Now it's a little bit different with print on demand or digital products as you're not going to be having to physically order materials to start making them. But for print on demand, you're 
first few steps would be to identify which print on demand provider you want to work with, as well as syncing your Etsy shop with that print on demand provider. If you want to offer digital products, let's say like printable wall art or digital cards or templates or anything like that, that is a digital download product, you're likely going to be creating your own designs for those. So your first step after you figure out exactly what types of products you want to offer within that category is to figure out how you're going to make your designs, identify which design software you want to use, and then go ahead and purchase whatever graphic elements or fonts you might need to create your designs. This is also applicable for creating your own designs for print on demand products. Whether your designs are going to be going on a physical print on demand product or on a digital download product, if you're creating your own graphic designs, you may need to purchase some things so that you are not starting from scratch if you're not a professional designer. There are a lot of great websites for purchasing things like graphic elements and fonts. I'll have some of those linked below if you're interested. And then of course, if you are offering digital download products, you want to do some research on similar best-selling listings within your niche to see what sizes and file types you need to offer. I recommend you looking at some of those best-selling listings to see what those sellers are offering because success leaves clues so you can see what people are wanting the most in terms of file type, which would be like PDF, PNG, JPEG, and file size as well. Once you have your first several products created, now it's time to create your listings and begin marketing. So there's a lot that goes into creating an Etsy listing that will sell and convert well, but the top three things I want you to think about here are using good, highly searched keyword phrases for your SEO. Now SEO can be super intimidating and sounds super complicated. Really all SEO is, is using phrases in specific parts of your listing that other people are already searching for. So you just do a little bit of research on a tool like Sales Samurai or even just on Etsy itself using the search bar to see what what phrases are currently being searched by a lot of shoppers on the platform. And then you're plugging those specific keyword phrases into places in your listing, like in your title and your tags and your listing description. That way Etsy knows how to pull your listing up in the correct search results. Now, along with using great keyword phrases in your listing, you also want to make sure that your photos are super professional looking. This can be done in several different ways. If you have a budget for it, you can always hire a professional photographer, but if you want to try to do it yourself, you totally can and you can make it look really professional. You just need to do a little research first as far as some basic photography, product photography techniques, as well as editing techniques. And then of course, if you're offering digital products, you might not do either of those. You might just use professional looking mockups, which are basically just images that are already taken that you can then put your design on to use as your product photos. Any of these methods work as long as it looks professional and clean and quality. And the third thing on your listing that I really want you to pay attention to is your price point. So your pricing on your product can really either make or break the success of that listing. So you want to make sure you have a really accurate, good price point that's going to be competitive, but also going to provide you some profit. And then of course, once you get your listings up and you're ready to do your big launch, you have to dive into marketing. You really can't just throw some listings up on Etsy and sit back and just expect sales to come in. That's just not how it works in the beginning. You really have to get after it and be proactive and intentional about getting getting the word out about your shop. People are not going to know that you even exist on Etsy unless you tell them and get the word out. So there are a lot of different types of marketing that you could try. My top three favorites for Etsy sellers are email marketing, social media marketing, and influencer marketing. Now I dive deep into these in some of my other videos on my Etsy playlist. You're welcome to go watch that if you want a deeper dive into marketing your Etsy shop. But those are the three that I recommend you start with when you are starting to advertise and get the word out. Okay, so we've been through all five of our steps to get going on Etsy, but I do want to give you these two pro tips as well. So the first one is that if you are offering handmade physical products and you're going to be sourcing physical materials to use, I highly recommend you find an actual wholesaler to source your supplies from. When you work with an actual wholesale company, as opposed to just buying your supplies from a retail place like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or some other retail craft supply shop, you're going to be saving a huge amount as they usually offer really steeply discounted prices. Now, one catch with this is that most wholesalers will also have you order in bulk. So you'll have to order more than one at a time. They'll have a minimum order depending on what that specific wholesaler requires. So you definitely want to do some research on this and make sure that you're not going to have to order a ton more than you need in the beginning. So there is a little bit of trial and error to this. I don't want you going out and just purchasing a ton of bulk materials when you haven't even tested your product yet to see if it's going to sell. But once you've tested it and you've started making some consistent sales on one specific thing that you make and you know 
you're going to have to be ordering more materials. Definitely look into sourcing those from an actual wholesale company. And pro tip number two that I have for you is regarding pricing. So I recommend that you price your items in a two phase strategy. The first phase of pricing is when you first start and you haven't made that many sales yet, you're going to price a little bit lower than what the average price point is for your niche and your type of product. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research to figure out what that is. But once you identify kind of that average middle price range for your product type, you want to price a little bit lower than average to be really super competitive. This means that you're going to have a leg up on your competition and you're more likely to make more sales in the beginning. Now in this first phase, you likely won't be profiting a lot because of that lower price point because the purpose of the first phase is not necessarily to make a huge profit yet. It's to start stacking sales on your listings, getting them ranking higher and higher in the search. Then once you start making consistent sales on your listings and you feel like they've been selling regularly and starting to rank higher and higher, that's when you can move on to phase two, which is upping your price point a little bit to make a healthier profit margin. Now at this point, once you raise your prices, you might start making a few less sales, but you're making more profit per sale. So actually you're working less for more profit, which is the goal. But you can't skip that first step to be more competitive to really start stacking some sales because you have to start ranking before you can start really making consistent sales and earning that higher profit margin. So I hope this was helpful for you, friends. I know it can be super intimidated and feel really complicated to get your Etsy shop going, but I hope this laid it out in a bit more of an easy to understand and doable way for you. It's definitely worth the upfront effort that it takes to start an Etsy shop. And I know you'll be successful if you put in the work of doing some trend research and making sure to follow these strategies step by step and being diligent to grow your shop. Make sure to click on the link below to check out Taylor Brands for all of your establishing your business needs. They are a great resource and I'm so excited for you to try them out. And if you're interested in further Etsy strategy and tips, you can click or tap on the square on the screen right now and that'll take you over to one of my other Etsy strategy videos. Bye friends.